Hello and welcome back. In this video, I want to look at some other systems that experience simple harmonic motion. And the first one I want to look at is the simple pendulum. So the simple pendulum is what you get when you hang a mass from a string and then you displace the mass slightly from the vertical. In this case, the mass will swing back and forth and this motion will be simple harmonic. Now one thing I should mention is that any time you have simple harmonic motion, any of the equations that relate acceleration, velocity, period, frequency, and angular frequency, so any equation that relates these five variables will always hold for any harmonic oscillator. So for example, maximum acceleration is equal to amplitude times omega squared for any harmonic oscillator and Vmax will be equal to A times omega. Likewise, we have that the frequency will be equal to 1 over the period, and the angular frequency will equal 2 pi divided by the, the period. These equations hold for any harmonic oscillator, so it doesn't matter if it's a mass attached to a spring, or if it's a mass that's hanging from a string and it's swinging back and forth. These equations always hold. Now the only types of equations that don't always hold in general are the equations that relate the angular frequency to the, the variables that are describing the actual system. So for example, for the spring we have that omega is equal to the square root of k divided by m. This is only true for a mass that's attached to a spring. So if we look at something like a simple pendulum where we have a mass that's hanging from a string, in this case it should be obvious that we can't use this formula anymore because in this case we don't even have a spring anymore so we don't have a value for the spring constant. So for something like the pendulum, the angular frequency is given by this formula right here. It's the square root of the gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, divided by the length of the string. So hopefully this formula makes some sense. If you've ever seen a uh, pendulum before, you know that the longer the length of the string, the longer it takes for the, the mass to swing back and forth. So at this point, I want to take a couple looks, uh, a look at a couple of examples. So the first example says, <clears throat> an engineer wants to design a pendulum clock so that it has a period of one second. And the question asks, how long should the string be? So in this case, we want the period of the oscillator to equal one second. And we're trying to solve for the length of the pendulum. So. In the previous slide, I showed that the angular frequency is equal to the square root of g divided by l. But in this case, I've been given the period. So remember, the period is related to the angular frequency according to 2 pi divided by the period. So solving for l, I see that g divided by l is equal to 2 pi over t quantity squared. So l is going to be equal to g times t over 2 pi quantity squared. So plugging in 1 second for this and plugging in 9.8 for g, I see that this is going to be equal to 0 0.248 meters. So that's how long the pendulum needs to be for the period to equal 1 second. So the next question asks, the engineer is considering making a second pendulum that will have a period of one minute. It's supposed to say a minute. And the question asks, is this reasonable? Well, in the previous slide, we found that the uh, length that the pendulum needed to be was equal to g times t divided by 2 pi quantity squared. So this is one of those problems that we can solve very quickly using proportions. So if t is equal to one second, then the length needs to be equal to 0 0.248 meters. Now, if I'm going to make the period equal to 60 seconds, so one minute, then the length needs to be 60 squared times longer. So that means the length would need to be 300 3,600 times 0 0.248 meters. So if the, if the period of the pendulum is one minute, the length of the pendulum needs to be 893.7 meters long. 
So looking at this, right, the pendulum would need to be 3,600 times longer, and that's how long that is. So looking at this, we can see that this is much longer than you would ever be able to, to make a, uh, a pendulum clock, right? This is like the size of like a skyscraper. Now, in general, for any harmonic oscillator, the angular frequency is typically going to be the square root of something that describes the strength of the restoring force. So for example, with a spring and a mass, the spring constant describes the strength of the thing that's trying to restore the mass back to its equilibrium position. In the case of a mass that's attached to a string, it's the strength of gravity that's pulling the mass back to its equilibrium. So it's always the square root of this restoring force divided by some measure of inertia. So for the mass that's attached to a spring, it's the mass of the mass that is the inertial uh, component. And if you have a mass that's attached to a string, it's swinging back and forth, the length of that string uh, increases the inertia. So the longer the string, the larger that inertia. So at this point, I think I'm going to end the discussion on simple harmonic motion. And in the next video, I think we're going to begin talking about work and energy.